I wasn't planning on emptying as much of the van as I have. However, I had to get to the VIP food bag. Skyler! What's this? Is that puppy dinner? There we go. Hi, I'm Jo and we are back up here in Scotland at the boat at RB Marine and today is an exciting day because we are going to get launched a little later on. We're not having to do any maintenance this trip because earlier in the year Tim actually came up and did 10 days doing as much maintenance as he can which meant that this time that route we can just go straight in the water and pretty much head off. So whilst we are getting ready I'm going to hand you over to Tim way back in March and he's going to tell you what upgrades and changes he has made to the boat. So I'm up here at the boat to do some maintenance. Unfortunately, Joe is too busy doing exciting things with Lever back at home, so she wasn't able to join me this time. But I thought I would try and uh, use my rudimentary filming skills and document a little bit of the work I'm going to be doing over the next few days. So one of the major jobs I want to do while I'm up here is reconfigure the electrical system a bit. Right now, I actually did it a couple of years ago, but right now it's not exactly greatly laid out. Um, and it doesn't really give us much capacity so as we said in the last series we kept losing uh, power and not being able to run our fridge. So for the next trip we have done a couple of things. Number one I've upgraded and bought ourselves a nice shiny compressor driven fridge which is actually a lot better and more efficient than the other one but the main thing I want to do if I climb out into this very windy place hopefully you can still hear me is take out the old uh, battery stuff which is all buried in here uh, in a very wet locker which is not a great place to have a load of electricity and wiring uh, take it out of there, uh, bring it over to, uh, bring it inside and install a new, much bigger capacity battery under here. So it's been a little while, I've been sort of fiddling around trying to figure out the best way to do this and still not convinced I've actually got there but uh, what I have done is mounted a couple of little legs on the bottom of here which are kind of weirdly angled because nothing on the hull of the boat is obviously straight uh, and there's lots of lumps and bumps I've got to account for in order to try and roughly get this to sit flat. Now, flat right now um, but that's kind of expected because there is a, a bump uh, with a bit of reinforcing ribbing right here which is going to be getting in the way of everything uh, and as I said I didn't actually expect to get this right first time so a lot more jigging and a lot more kind of wiggling about and trying to figure out if I can make this actually fit. So day two and it's pretty miserable outside today uh, coming down not too heavily but pretty constantly so I took this opportunity this morning and decided I would go down to uh, Helensborough to get some supplies so that I can crack on with the job I'm going to do. Uh, so we've got a few little bits and bobs, uh, anchor bulb to replace the wrong anchor bulb I bought last time I went up the mast, uh, some bilge paint to go on the, uh, the box, uh, jigsaw because uh, my jigsaw I bought with me was being very temperamental and I lost my temper with it yesterday and threw it over the side of the boat. Um, fan heater, so hopefully it's uh, not going to be as cold tonight. Uh, but also so that I can get some warmth into the hull because uh, I've decided I'm going to actually fiberglass in the legs for the box that I made yesterday. A um, couple of concerns regarding that, uh, well partly I've got the fan heater so I can get enough warmth into the hull and into the material to actually make this work. I don't think fiberglass likes being done in particularly cold temperatures. Um, but yeah, so problems with doing this are uh, fumes. Uh, it's a pretty tight spot down there and I'm not sure how uh, 
how long I'm going to survive down there with the fumes so I'm going to just be a little bit careful with that uh, and then also I actually have to sleep in here tonight so I'm not sure how uh, <laughs> how bad that's going to be so I may end up waiting till tomorrow so I can at least do it sort of first thing and give the boat a chance to air out before I have to sleep with it so anyway that's enough of the shopping uh, best, uh, we better get on with some work Okay, so that was a lot of sanding in that little hole. Um, in the end, I did kind of figure out that I have got a grinding wheel on it, well, a wire grinding wheel, which is not exactly the best tool for the job, but it's better than uh, the hand sanding I was trying to do before. And I think I've got it fairly well ground down and ready to uh, ready to epoxy, not epoxy, to five glass the uh, things in, but it's now about four o'clock. And like I said earlier, I don't really want to do a load of that just a few hours before I'm going to try and sleep inside this enclosed box so I think we'll uh, leave that as it is ready cleaned up ready to go from the morning so today I'm going to try and five glass this down there to make the supports for the battery box um, did a little bit of sort of watching a videos and things like that to figure out how to do this and I think I've got it I mean, first basically I've got to coat this all with uh, some of the epoxy just to stop it soaking it all up when I actually put the fiber on it um, once that's sort of had a chance to go tacky, can then move down putting it actually in there. Uh, I've got these two pots that came with the kit. One is sort of a shredded glass fibre and one is some kind of powder. Uh, Got to be honest, no idea what the powder's for. Can't find any reference to it in the instructions. Um, but this is basically so I can mix it in with the epoxy to make a bit of a putty to go along the seams. Uh, so that'll be the first job. Once that's had a chance to uh, tacky up a little bit, I'm going to cut strips that kind of go create the bond between the floor and the side of this and then another one that will come over the top of it um, do that in two pieces because it's easier to get it sort of flushed and get all the air pushed out of it at least that's the plan anyway so I haven't spent like the last hour or so, I guess, going in and out of the little hole to try and get this fiber thing go. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not sure it's gone particularly as well as I would have hoped. Um, I struggled to get all like the voids out of it. Um, I think, following the fact that this is my first time and general incompetence, I think the main mistake I've made was um, uh, I cut it into pieces, this the mat into pieces so that I could use a couple of thinner strips to kind of make the join to the hole and then have a sort of larger one that would then wrap over the whole thing i think in hindsight that the one i was using to wrap over the whole thing was probably too large um it would probably been easier if i had cut that into a smaller strip as well and just just on the top of it because um it wouldn't like properly seal around uh, the top um now you know time will tell whether or not it's it's going to actually function, work or not but um, I think the bond you know the actual bond to the hull seems to be pretty pretty well made there didn't seem to be any air voids in that and that seems pretty nice and solid so I'm hoping that the bit of like weakness on the top isn't actually going to matter because I mean realistically all the fiberglass is doing is holding the wooden upright in place so that the box can sit on you know most of the strength will go through the actual wooden blocks it's going to be sat on so well you know don't know we'll have to see how it turns out but you know you got to try these things to uh know how bad you are at it so lesson learned okay so next job on the list is to fix the toilet because uh it did used to leak quite a bit if you look down into the uh thing you can see right now and it's missing the pump um yeah it started to leak quite a lot on the last trip um every time we used it which is unpleasant to say the least uh it's mainly just leaking out of the pump area not the not the bad area, should we say. Um, 
and I so I bought a service kit so I could resurface and I took the pump home with me uh, but when I took the pump apart to service it it basically all just fell to pieces and all the plastic inside it, it was knackered so instead I've got a whole new brand new upgraded pump which uh, hopefully should be pretty quick and easy to fit at least we just need bolting on the tubes the attaching and then we'll have a functioning toilet again Okay, so toilet's in, more or less, uh, kind of went in okay, uh, the pipes are a little bit janky but they always were so, and they worked before so they should work now, uh, so unfortunately until we're back on the water I can't use the toilet so it's impossible for me to know whether or not it's going to leak or not but um, I guess that'll be a surprise for when we launch in May. So the problem we're having with the rudder is if you look here, uh, when the rudder's straight like this, or when the tiller's straight like this I should say, uh, the rudder is actually pretty far off being straight. In fact, I believe for it to be straight, it actually needs to be somewhere around there. We have a quick butchers over the back. Excuse me, I'm going to turn you upside down when you do this. Uh, you should be able to see there that the rudder is pretty straight there, but as you can see, the tiller is not. And this is causing major issues with the uh, autopilot, partly because it's too far for the autopilot to actually reach. So it keeps stalling out when it tries to steer us straight. Um, and looking at the, the mount here, um, it's obviously had some issues in the past. You know, you've got a nice little crack through it here. Uh, it's still one piece on the other side. Uh, and it's got this structural piece of wire, which is what's uh, holding it together. And I think what I need to do is somehow get this off, um, we're separated from here and put it back on straight and then put something a bit better through this and this wire so it doesn't slip again. The main issue I've got with that though is that it is well and truly seized to the shaft so I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get off so let's give that a go. Okay, so I actually got that off a bit easier than I expected, to be fair. Um, however, having taken it off, it seems like it's been messed around with quite a lot. Um, you've got kind of multiple holes that have been sort of drilled into it. Another one on this side here. Um, uh, and this thing is, I don't know, it's been kind of bored out. So I'm not sure exactly how it's supposed to get one. Uh, it is tapered so it will uh, friction fit pretty well but my hope was to be able to put some kind of bolt or pin through it which would create a bit more of a solid and permanent connection which would stop it from slipping out of alignment but uh, to do that I'm going to have to drill through it which I'm not necessarily that excited about the prospect of trying to drill through this because it looks like it's pretty hard steel but also you know it's already been buggered around with quite a bit so i don't necessarily want to make it even weaker by drilling more holes in so i mean i'm going to like just fit it back on straight and see what that looks like and then see if i can make a plan from there took a little while, long, while longer as everything always seems to um, as you can see by how dark it is right now um, but it has managed to get it to go back on kind of uh, use my phone light so we can see fiberglassing yesterday had a chance to set 
uh, and it's gone, some of it's gone okay, some of it's not gone too well. Um, in terms of like the bond to the hull, it's really strong and I'm pretty happy with how that's come out, but um, I did end up losing, uh, leaving some voids in the top of it. I've realised, well partly realised myself and partly realised I'm speaking to the guy at the boatyard that uh, I didn't take off the edges of the board enough, I left two sharper corners on the top of it, um, which meant that as the fiberglass is sort of trying to bend around it, it's too sharp an angle and it just the fibres just keep wanting to spring it out, which is why I've ended up with these voids. It's still pretty strong, um, but what I think I'm going to do is actually put another layer um, or a couple of layers of fiberglass over the top. Um, mainly, I think strength-wise it'll be fine, even if it does sort of crush that void a little bit, um, because the, the board itself has enough strength to hold it. Um, but the main reason is I don't want water getting in there, and I think right now, eventually water's going to get in there, it's going to rot out of the wood, and it's just going to be a problem for down the road. So uh, I'm going to attempt to sort of fill the voids by injecting some of the um, epoxy into those voids. Um, and then I'm going to put another couple of layers just to make sure it's properly sealed up. And then hopefully tomorrow that will mean I can put the box on. Two of the fiberglass thing is now complete. And I must say I'm much happier with how the second round's come out. Um, I managed to actually drill some holes into the void that I'd created. Um, and the little part of powder, which I didn't know what it was yesterday, is I essentially just ground up fiberglass. So uh, I mixed up a load of that with some epoxy and basically injected it into each of the voids, which did a really good job actually of filling out and filling all those voids in. So hopefully that'll help a little bit with strength. Uh, and I've sort of put another decent layer of fiberglass on it, which again has no bubbles in it now because it's quite rounded off, so it worked out pretty nicely. So. Apart from being a day behind schedule, because I've got to wait another day for that to dry before I can get in there and paint and start doing the electrics, um, I'm much happier with how that's come out. So, there's a lesson for you. If you're going to do fire glassing for the first time, probably grab a couple of little bits of wood and have a practice. Because uh, if I knew now what I if I knew yesterday what I knew now, um, it would have gone a lot better the first time. So, but yeah, fingers crossed. Should be good now. struggle um the new battery which tends to be a little bit overkill for the size of the boat but given we like to spend a lot of time off grid having a chunk of power for the old fridge and lights and everything else is quite nice but it does weigh about, i think it's around 51 kilos which would be 120 pounds 110 pounds which i gotta be honest is getting this up onto the boat was not something i was confident i'd actually be able to do so but with a bit of boost strength and force, I managed to get it in there and also managed to get it into the box without breaking the box, by the looks of it. So, mission successful. Next job will be to uh, start rewiring, but I think I'm going to wait for tomorrow for that because once I start down that road, I'm not going to have any power and I don't know if I'm going to get it all done tonight. So, don't really want to spend the night without any power. So, 
Battery's in, box is secure, job done. Okay, well, today was only for 10% chance of rain, so I thought I'd crack on loose some fiberglassing, which meant it immediately started raining. Thanks again, Met Office. Um, so a couple of jobs I've done today. The out here we have this little uh, cubby thing, which uh, it took a bit of a battering in the rain, and as plywood tends to do when it rains, it started to fall to pieces. So I've actually my newfound love for fiberglassing. I've fiberglassed over all the edges and sealed it up. Uh, obviously, I say it started to rain as soon as that, but hopefully, it has a little cover on it there will keep it okay. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Next job is to crawl back into my little hole under here. Uh, and start basically rewiring and reconnecting everything um, which shouldn't be too difficult to say because um, all I actually really need to do is take the battery lines that are running to the back of the boat now and connect them to the battery in the middle of the boat and as they all run past that anyway uh, it's not going to be too difficult but it's just an awkward and annoying place to be so let's get back under there this is literally like a scene from a horror film uh, right Okay, so pull all the main battery cables back in here. Now they're all mixed in with the rest of this hellhole. Um, and basically, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I've got a bus bar that I'm going to mount here for the negative feed, and then I've got a box somewhere here. This thing, which is all tangled up somehow. Uh, is going to mount on here uh, and that's got a, an isolator switch for the uh, positive so that we can uh, quickly disconnect the battery power if we need to so let's see what we can do Okay, well that was quite a few hours underneath there and as you can hopefully see it wasn't too dark I got it all connected up um, still a lot of tidying up to do down there um, I haven't got any cable ties or anything though that jumping I'm going to use just to uh, bunch all the cables together and just tidy it up so it's not so much of a spaghetti mess down there but so far everything's connected the uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it in the light uh, it's really 13 volts, so that is a good sign that it's uh, actually running off the battery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the uh, the charger, which is underneath here, and find out if uh, if that has any effect. So, looking now at it, I've turned on the charger, and it's showing up at 13.9. It's lower than it was. It was on 14 point something, but um, that generally means that the uh, Charger is charging and lights are working. So I think everything's hooked up. So a bit of a supply start today because they uh, turned up to put the mast up, which I didn't think they were going to do while I was here. But uh, so I've got to get things a little bit organized quickly so we can uh, get her back up. That's it, trip's done. I uh, got most of what I wanted done actually. I think uh, even got some jobs done that I didn't expect to get done. Boat's all uh, tucked up. I'm gonna sit there now, next couple of months until we are back up here, hopefully for a sailing trip. But uh, see you later, RB Marine. Thanks for having me. And I'll see you in a few months, Salty Sea Dog.
got the boat ready and we are now on the way. It is now 20 to 7, so it's a bit later than we hoped for, but the weather seems to be holding up alright. So we are headed to our favourite first night spot, Carrick Castle. Oh, it's so slimy! <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, I'm excited to see you too. Oh, steady, steady. Just had a really nice motor over from Rossneaf to Carrot Castle. It's absolutely perfectly still here now, which is really quite nice. Next time, we stay and explore some more of Carrick Castle before heading up around the Kyles of Butte and then have a rough sail down to Inchmarnock Island.